Hi there, welcome to today's Deck Tech over on the YouTube channel. Um, today we're looking at one of the cards that spawned very on in the set, and we couldn't read, I couldn't do much with it beforehand because we didn't know what map tokens did, but we do now, because obviously I'm talking about Kellen Daring Traveller. Um, it's the only card that's an adventure in the set, which is quite interesting. It's a 2-3 for one on white. Um, has two halves to it. The journey on the adventure side is create X map tokens where X is the number of opponents who control an artifact. That's quite nice. Um, one green mana. The chances are you're going to get, well, you're always going to get one map token. And we know what map tokens do now if you need a refresher. They are artifacts that you can pay one mana for and target creature you control explores. So you either end up with a plus one, plus one counter on the creature. Or you end up with a land in your hand. Um, obviously the card you get the plus one, plus one form either ends up on top of your library in your graveyard, depending where you go with it. But that's how they work out. It's pretty good. Um, but Kellen has a very interesting second ability. For the creature side, you, when you attack with Kellen, um, you get to look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature with mana value three or less, hey, you get to put it in your hand. Otherwise, you may put it in your graveyard. You don't have to. You can may put it in your graveyard. So, I was thinking about this deck for a long time once I found out what map tokens did. And I was really hoping to go down a pure explore ramp theme with it. Um, instead of going with the usual plus one, plus one counters, have as much explore as I could in the deck. And then I realised how few white creatures there are with explore. Yeah, it's not many. It's obviously the Merfolk, the green, the blue green Merfolk tribal deck has a lot of that in. And you know, the green Merfolk, a lot of them have Explore. Um, it's even with the new set and go back to Ixlan originally. So it turned into a kind of a hybrid deck, which I'm very proud of and I've played, and it does work. I suspect someone, you know, it can be tuned to a greater extent, but this one works really well, especially if you're looking at something around about power level six. Um, if you've got like a low power pod you want to join, this one is really good fun to play. So here we go. This is what today's deck really does look like. As usual, for one of my deck techs, start with the basic lands um, and what have you. So we've got a lot of green white dual lands, as you can see, Blossoming Sayings, Arctic Tree Line. Plaza, Promenade, uh, Brushland, Canopy Vista, so on and so forth. Um, both the castles are here just to help. Probably don't really need Castle Garen Brig. You can probably take this out and put another planes in if you want to. Um, but yeah, it's here. It might give us six mana to cast a few more of the spells that we're hopefully getting off Kellen. Beyond that, we've got Fabled Passage in. Uh, there's no Field of the Dead for this one. There's obviously Fortified Village. Gavini Townships, we want to pump our creatures up. And I've also included Khan's Bastion, just so we can double up on the plus one, plus one counters that are coming along. A little bit of proliferation doesn't help hurt with this deck. Whole load of planes, Red Tower, Temple of the False God, round it off. We've got a lot of planes because we are playing Emiria, the Sky Room. Um, again, it's just a backup way of getting some things back from our graveyard to play if we need to. Ramp-wise, the usual selection, Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman, Soul Ring... Arcane Signet, Marble Diamond, Moss Diamond. I've put them all in. I couldn't see the point in not having them in, um, so we went with them. But the rest of it is very much based around exploring and getting things into play. As you see, the bulk of the deck, and I'll be honest about it, sits in the three mana and two mana slots. So, because we want to be able to hit things off Kellen to keep coming into play. So, at the start of the beginning, Miner's Guidewing, one of the new ones that explores, has to die, but then you explore. Um, Avacyn's Pilgrim, along with Birds of Paradise, gives us a little bit of ramp that we can find. The Cenote Scout is also in from the new Lost Counts of Ixalan set, and it's the battlefield it explores. So, you know, one mana for a 2-2, possibly, or a land. I'll go with that. Enter the Unknown, get a creature to explore, and then play an additional land. This comes from Rivals, if I remember, of Ixalan, the original, one of the original, you know, when it was a three-block set. Well, three set block, sorry. Um, it's still there, still good in this deck. Glow Cap Lantern is the only bit of equipment in the deck, if I remember correctly. You may look at the top card of your library at any time, and whenever this creature attack it explores. Yeah, I'll go with that, that's fine. Hardened Scales is a no brain, obviously. We're going for plus one, plus one counters. Let's make extra ones on the creatures. 
JD Offshoot. I put it in just so we had a little bit of life gain. I didn't want to go too far down the landfall deck. Um, although we do have a few more landfall cards coming up. You know, like the Scythe Jadger is here. Um, yeah. Got to have something. Might as well have something if we try and play all these lands. So a little bit of landfall won't kill us. But I haven't gone with the usual suspects for landfall. So I've tried to keep it as much, much as minimum as I can. Seeker of Sunlight. Nice thing to sink your mana into later in the game, and you keep get to exploring with it, which I really do enjoy. Um, twist and turns is very nice. If a creature you would ex creature you control explore, instead it's scry one, and then that creature explores. So you can you know find out if there's a land there if you want the land, or you can put the land to the bottom and get a spell on top to make your creature bigger. Um, and then you, when you get to flip it, you may look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a creature card from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your li hand in any order. Library in any order, not your hand. Um, so, yeah, let's go for that. It's always fun. Elixir of Immortality is just here to make sure that we can shuffle everything back in when it gets killed. Fearless Fledgling, a little bit more landfall fun and games. Um, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it gains flying. Yep, I kept it in because we are proliferating. We do like plus one, plus one counters. This isn't too sad at all. Brought back. Um, choose up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard or put from the battlefield this turn. Return them to the battlefield tapped. Always worth leaving up the two white mana when you're getting quite a few creatures in play and you're worried about a wrath effect. So, yeah, keep it going. Bloom Tenderer gives a bit more ramp. Druid Class lets us play an additional land and a little bit of landfall to gain some life. Excellence Diviner comes into play, explores, so you probably end up with a 1-4 most of the time, which is okay, but, you know, proliferate it up, go further. Clarny Heart Expedition's in, just so we can get the triggers off this as the lands come into play, and we get to go and search out some basic land cards. Probably going to be double planes at some stage, just so we want to get them out to make sure that we can trigger Emeria when we get there. Lotus Cobra, landfall, extra land. Branch Walker, into the battlefield, explores. Hopefully going to be a 3-2 Merfolk for 2 mana, which is cool. Over the Edge, a um, little bit of an eye factor enchantment removal if we need it, or we get to double explore, which is quite fun. Roaring Earth hits next, more landfall, but that chucks around plus 1, plus 1 counters, which is what we're interested in with what we've got going on. And we've got some interesting things coming up that'll help with that to go alongside our Highland Scales. Carotid gives a bit more ramp. Um, the Caduso gets plus 1, plus 1 counters with the landfall. Wild Growth Walker gets bigger when we explore. Um, plus one, plus one, and we gain some life. This thing used to go really massive in the original Ixland deck, so hopefully we can carry on with that here. Um, Shadow Caravel, quite like this. Whenever a creature you control explores, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and then you get to crew it for two. Hmm, yeah, I'll go with that. Let's make the Caravel as big as we can, as quickly as we can. Treasure map, just because that's our 37th land and the treasure tokens do help and it gives us a little bit of extra card draw if we need it. And then we really do come to the heart of the deck with the three drop stuff. Starting with the MS3 Sunrise, one of the few white creatures that explores. Um, a 3 2 first striker is very do nice in this deck, thank you very much. Along with um, Kijadi's Dawn Runner, one of the new white cards that explores from our new set of Lost Cameras of Ixland. Um, it explores when it enters the battlefield and it has double strike. Yeah, I'll cope with that, thanks. Architect of the Untamed, I was trying to think of a way to get some bigger creatures in the play. Architect's quite nice, it comes back and we keep the energy. Yes, it's another landfall card, but yeah, that's the way it goes. Azusa helps us get our lands into play that we're getting in our hand off all our explore triggers. Beastmaster Ascension, just attack with our creatures and make them even bigger. Branching Evolution, this card has been a dream. I'm going to be honest about this. Um, on MTGO a while back, this was kicking around about eight to nine tickets. Probably even higher than that at one stage. I haven't looked at it properly. But it got reprinted in one of the Commander decks. Now, I know we don't have the Commander decks for Lost Cameras of Ixalan on MTGO, but they did put some of the cards in. And Branching Evolution's there. And this is currently dropped. Well, this version that I've got here, when I picked this up, was... 0.2 of a ticket from one of the traders yeah trip doubling your counters you're putting on for three mana um yeah just make sure you stack them in the right orders if you put one on with hardened scales so that's two you want to double them to four don't do it the other way around don't put this on the stack so hardened scales and then this resolves first you get two three you want to do it the other way around so you get four yeah two then four it's better obviously 
Anyway, moving on. Evolution Sage. Landfall gives us the proliferate trigger, which we wanted to get the plus one, plus ones up. Grazing Glade Heart, just so we can gain some life. Um, if you're not happy playing this level of land, you want to play the 37, you can drop in your Broker's Hideout, which I've got up here, and take out this one. Retreat to Kadzu, a bit more landfall that does the plus one, plus one on life gain. Rivald Herald gives us a whole explore with the Vigilance side of it. Scoot Swarm to get some more landfall on the go. Uh, we like tokens. I'm hoping this isn't bugged anymore. I've seen a few games where there's been too many Scoot Swarms in play and it's crashed MTGO. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's not going to happen. I think it's worth talking about the Sentinel of the Nameless City. Um, one of the new cards, very good. 3-4 for 3 mana with Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get a map token. Sack the map token up, make it a 4-5. Your opponents will start having lots of nightmares or, you know, even more, depending which one of these you've got in play. But, you know, it's there. Tyler's Provisioner, Landfall gives us treasure, food if we need it. Tyler's Tracker does the same thing, gives us clue tokens and gets bigger and pumps. Tishana's Wayfarer, Wayfinder, sorry, from the original set, enters the battlefield it explores. And Arwen, Weezer of Hope, whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield. Mm. With a number of additional plus one, plus one counters on it, equal to Arwen's Weezer's toughness. Some of the spells we've got will let you explore a target creature, put the plus one, plus one counters on Arwen as soon as you can. Get that toughness up, more toughness, better tokens, so on and so forth. Course of a crew fix, a little bit more landfall, play the lands from the top of your library. Um, Course of Garen Brig, just like to interchuck around some plus one, plus one counters, make our smaller things bigger. Jade Light Ranger explores twice when it enters the battlefield, so hopefully goes up to a 4 3 very quickly. Undergrowth Champion likes lands coming into play, gets plus one, plus one counters. And Tribute to the World Tree. Um, most of our creatures have power under three. There's a few that don't, but most of the majority of our creatures do. With this in play, we're going to have a whole load of power of three, three creatures, and then any other tricks we can do with it, whether it's proliferation, exploring, so on and so forth, or, you know, extra counters. Um, coming off our favourite new enchantment, where I've just left it. You know the one I'm talking about, branching evolution, there it is. Good fun. Right, um, Cartographer's Companion enters the battlefield to get a map token. Yep, cope with that. So all of these cards, all the creatures here, are things we can target with Kellen, which we should be able to do when we attack with Kellen. Got overall eight cards that cost over three mana. Um, and even one of them can be dubious if you want to. So Felidar Retreat gives us more creatures if we need them or puts plus one, plus one counters everywhere and gives us Vigilance. Trove Warden lets something come back from our graveyard. Uh, whenever a land ends about field under your control, exile target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard. When it when the Trove Warden dies, each permanent with uh, put each permanent card exiled with its back into its under, under onto the battlefield under its own control. Sorry, I'm very tongue tied today. I'm very tired. I'm sorry. Basically, this means that anything that's being killed when this comes to play, as long as you get some landfall triggers on the go, you're going to get them back when they eventually kill this off. And if you can make this big, it's going to be hard for them to kill it off, unless they've got targeted removal. Emperor's Vanguard deals combat damage to a player, explores. We had to have this in here. Yeah, that's fine. Path of Discovery. One of the key cards in here from Rivals of Ixlan. Creature enters the battlefield, it explores. I like giving creatures, you know, static of giving everything explore. Speckless will be getting gotten rid of as soon as possible, but yeah, at the start, it works well. And finally, we have one of the dinosaurs. Uh, mm. Path Finding Axe Jaw. This comes in from the Lost Cameras of Ixalan, and it just is a dinosaur that explores when it comes in. It's probably the biggest creature you'll have in your deck most of the time, unless, you know, Sunrise. Sunseeker really does hit its trigger. I had to include this. Um, it's one of the few white creatures that's got Explore on it. So, yeah, had to be here. Doubling Season is a bit of a no-brainer. We want to double up the amount of counters we're getting. It gets very complicated where you've got Heart of Hardened Scales in play, you've got Branching Evolution in play, and you've got Doubling Season in play. Trust me, it makes your brain hurt, but I'm really glad it all works quite smoothly on MTGO because it just works out for you as long as you stack things in the right order. 
And then the last card, which I'm a bit dubious about if it should be counted as one of the um, over three mana cards, um, because originally it's not. It will count as a one mana card for Kellen because of the X. But yeah, if you can pay a whole lot of mana and get a load of exploring done, we're going to have a big Merfolk Scout. And it's going to be fun for someone to try and get rid of it. And that's it. Like I say, it needs a little bit of work. I'm not going to argue about it. Um, there is some, you know, we had to go down the landfall route a little bit. I didn't want to do as much as I had to, but I have had to to make sure the deck works. Um, it would have been nice to have some more white creatures to explore. You never know, we might see explore again in the future, which would be good. Um, or more creatures that produce map tokens. It's not that many, unfortunately, which is a shame, So I quite like the map tokens. But... Well, in these colours anyway, I should say. Just to you know, put before everyone shouts me in the comments. But I quite like Kellen, and I think it's going to be fun to play it. So, there's a link down below to the stream. You can come give me a follow over there. You can see me play this on stream. Um, come back tomorrow. See tomorrow's deck tech. Taking a break from Lost Caverns of Ixalan tomorrow, but just for something fun I built on stream the other night that I'm having great fun playing at the moment. And hopefully... I'll see you soon in the next video or you'll come and say hello on the stream. Take care and really please, hopefully, you've hit the sub button. Please do so. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. See you soon. Bye.